For what purpose do the doorkeepers rise? Mr. President, the Honorable Thomas A. Schweik, Auditor of Missouri, approaches the chambers. Mr. Doorkeeper, open the, the doors and allow the Honorable Thomas A. Schweik, Auditor of Missouri, to enter the chamber. The following representatives and senators will escort the Governor of Missouri Boys State to the diet. Representative Patterson, Representative Peltz, Representative Horton, Representative Ceasing, Representative Yu, Senator Thomas, Senator Singleton, Senator Luders, Senator Dilworth, and Senator Webster. For what purpose do the doorkeepers rise? Mr. President, the Governor of Missouri Boy State approaches the chamber. Mr. Doorkeeper, open the door and allow the Governor of Missouri Boy State to enter the chamber. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, Mr. President Pro Tempor, esteemed legionnaires and citizens, I would like to begin by saying what an honor it has been to serve you as the governor this past year. It has been a great session and my pleasure to be working side by side with the next group of great American leaders. I would like to briefly thank my cabinet as well as those appointed officials for working with me throughout the week. I would also like to extend my gratitude toward Boy State staff for giving me this opportunity. But most importantly, we should all take a moment now and thank the American Legion for not only their service to this great country, but also for putting on such a wonderful program that has touched the hearts and lives of thousands of Missouri citizens. In fact, this year their influence has spread across the globe as we have extended our program to individuals of other states and other countries. 
I believe I speak on behalf of everyone here at Boise State when I say that we have greatly enjoyed having the 15 delegates here from China, the delegate from Puerto Rico, as well as the individual from the exotic land of Arkansas. <laughs> Over the week, I have seen a transformation. A transformation from a group of kids who hardly knew each other, a group of kids who didn't want to be here, a group of kids who thought government was boring, to cities rallying together, to friendships that will last a lifetime, to a functioning state made up of the best young adults that the world has to offer. Be warned, boy staters, for when this week is over, you will be heading back to the real world, where people will tell you that you can't, that you are too young, and that you should quit. A world more complicated than GSOs and cell phone restrictions. A world where you can't win the approval of the masses with nothing more than a picture of Selena Gomez. <laughs> down. There will be loss, and there will be doubt. However, it is in these times that we must look to the ancient wisdom of the great poet Tupac, who once said, do not cry, dry your eyes, forgive, but don't forget, and keep your head up. It is not our titles or our money that defines us. It is not our jobs or our abilities that make us great. The only way to success in this world is a relentless consistency in your refusal to give up. Amen. More than all of the governmental practices, law, or journalism that you have learned this week, I hope each and every one of you take away from this the knowledge of what it means to be part of something bigger than yourself. The strength to stand up against the odds and the will to keep moving forward when all seems lost. I know for a fact that all of you have the potential to become great. In here could be the next great businessman, reporter, or perhaps even the President of the United States. However, your path is not guaranteed. The choice is up to you, Boys State. Will you choose to passionately pursue your potential? Will you choose to make a difference where you can? And will you choose to never, never quit? If so, then you have already begun your path to success. Thank you. For what purpose does the Senate Majority Leader rise? Mr. President, I move the adoption of Joint Resolution Number 1. Secretary of the Senate, please read the resolution. Joint Resolution Number 1. Be resolved by a joint session of the Missouri Boys State General Assembly on the 20th day of June 2013 that the report from the Joint Committee on Elections certifying the results of the general ele election for Missouri Boys State Attorney General, State Treasurer, State Auditor, Secretary of State, Lieutenant Governor, and Governor be approved. All members of the General Assembly in favor of Joint Resolution Number 1, please stand. Be seated. All opposed, please stand. By your vote, you have adopted Joint Resolution Number 1, certifying these individuals as the duly elected officials of the 74th Session of Missouri Boys State. Yeah. Attorney General Dominic Eugene Brigotto. Yeah. Treasurer David Zachariah Headland. Auditor, Nate Austin Henry. Secretary of State, Joshua Everett Dunn.
Lieutenant Governor Quentin Hezekiah Hooks. <laughs> Members of the legislature, the director of Missouri Boys State, Mike Plunkett. Gentlemen, here in a few moments, you will, have, you will have completed the process of forming an entire state government. All of your elected officials will be sworn in, and the 74th session, the American Legion Boys State of Missouri, will have a fully functioning government at all levels. You are to be congratulated. You've done a great job. It's my great pleasure to introduce the man who will swear in these officials after he delivers some remarks to you. He is a fifth generation Missourian and a graduate of the St. Louis County Public Schools, Yale University, and Harvard Law School. Yeah, you can clap if you want to. He practiced law for over 20 years in St. Louis at the law firm of Brian Cave. He began his public service career investigating the notorious siege at Waco, Texas as part of Jack Danforth's special counsel investigation. He then served as chief of staff to three United States ambassadors to the United Nations and as deputy director and acting director of the law enforcement division of the United States State Department where he oversaw the activities of 4,000 people in over 40 countries with an annual budget of $2.5 billion. In March 2007, President George W. Bush appointed him U.S. Ambassador for Counter-Narcotics and Justice Reform in Afghanistan. During his service in the State Department, he led diplomatic missions to approximately 30 countries. And he is the author of three books, Protect Yourself from Business Lawsuits and Lawyers Like Me. No, I'm not the lawyer, that's the title of the book. Crash Proof Your Life and Staying Power. In November 2010, the people of Missouri elected him to statewide office as their state auditor. He is married and has two teenagers, and so I know it is a great sacrifice of his time to be here with you. He was eager to be here, and we are honored to have him. Please join me in giving a great Boy State welcome to State Auditor Tom Swike. Thank you. Thank you very much. What an honor to be here. I'd like to thank the members of the legislature, the judges of the Supreme Court, the new statewide elected officials, and all the great people that put together what I anticipate it looks like was one heck of a good week, wasn't it? You have a good time here? Yeah, it looks like it was a lot of fun. You know, you all are at such a critical time in your lives uh, where your futures are going to take shape. You all have a lot of promise or you would not be here. I can see the enthusiasm. I can see the quality of the people that you've elected. And there's just so much waiting for you down the road. Um, I've had the honor to get to know a lot of very successful people in my life. Uh, I've been a lawyer, as you know, in private practice. I got to talk to CEOs and top-level business people and judges. I served as a diplomat and got to work with both the current president and the past president, the vice presidents, members of the Senate, ambassadors, and leaders around the world. I've been a politician now, working with governors and senators every day, and I've seen some really, really successful people. But as was alluded to in the introduction, I've also served as a federal prosecutor, where I saw criminals, people who did very bad things. Um, I've served as an international law enforcement official, and I saw very bright people who turned into the heads of drug cartels, uh, who were part of gangs, who had organized crime syndicates in Russia and other places around the world. And as state auditor, I've only been auditor for 21 months, I found over 20 people, public officials, many of them elected, who have stolen and embezzled money and defrauded the taxpayers, and many of them I've had to put in jail. So 
There's a lot of really smart people that go on to do amazing things and become very, very successful. And for whatever reason, I've unfortunately seen a lot of really smart, bright people who pick a bad path and who go on to become criminals and do bad things. And I really believe, based on what I've seen and how I've gotten to know these people, some of them behind bars, I've talked to them, that most of the important decisions on what direction they were going to take in their life, whether it would be to advance good in the world or to advance themselves and advance bad in the world, were made right around the time they were your age. So this is a really critical time for you to make the right decisions, to do the right things, and take a path that's going to lead to tremendous success, because from what I understand, in order to get here, you have to have the potential for greatness. But greatness can be channeled in a lot of directions. Uh, you can be a great criminal, or you can be a great leader. And I'm hoping that you all will choose the right path as you go forward. So what I did, and, and there was a mention of one of my books earlier on, several years ago I decided, you know, I want to find out what the qualities are that lead to long-term success in somebody's life as opposed to the bad path. And I interviewed 40 very successful people I've been lucky enough to come into contact with. Politicians, rock stars like Sheryl Crow, four-star generals, CEOs, and I wanted to see what is it that led them to long-term success versus a bad path. And I want to talk to you a little bit tonight, before we swear in your wonderful new statewide elected officials, about some of the things that those people told me and some of the things you should think about at what I think is a very critical time in your life, the time when you'll choose the right path or the wrong path. Now, I'm sure people have already talked to you this week about the first thing I'm going to say, which is integrity. Have you been talking about integrity this week and the importance of integrity, honesty, respect for others, Little things, writing thank you notes, looking up to people, learning from people. Having integrity is the core of any long-term successful person. Because then you're looking out for what's right as opposed to what's in your interest. And that's a critical piece of it, a very critical piece of it. Another thing I think is very important is spirituality. Now, for me, spirituality means my religion. Uh, but some of the people I talked to and some of the people I worked with were not so religious. But they still had a sense of spirituality. Successful people do not live for the day, for what feels good right now, uh, for what's going to help them right now at the expense of others. They realize that they have a place in this world that's special. Um, I was talking to an astronomy professor at Yale several years ago, and I said to her, do you believe in spirituality? You study science. And she said, let me tell you something. I take my telescope, and I look out, and I see a very dark and forbidding universe. I see, if you go close to the sun, things really, really cold, and further away, something, uh, something very hot, something very cold further out. I see jagged mountains and craters, and then you see Earth, this amazing anomaly. Nothing else like it anywhere any of our telescopes can see. It's something very, very special in the universe, and it's an honor that all of us have been put on this Earth by our God at this time, and there is a greater purpose to it. And that's what she told me. She was a scientist. She believed in spirituality. There is a reason you're here. Life is a precious resource. And the fact that you were given a life at this place on this earth is amazing. And then think about where you were born. The United States of America. The greatest country in the history of civilization at its greatest and most powerful time. Aren't you lucky to be here? If you had been born 500 years ago, you would have been dealing with disease and pestilence and backwardness. But you're here in the USA, the greatest economy the world has ever known, the most powerful military the world has ever known, but more important, the greatest government ever in the history of Earth. And you're here right now at this time. That's something special. That is not an accident. And you need to make the best of it. So, thank you. I think it's important that you have integrity and that you have a sense of spirituality, that there is a reason I'm here and I'm here to do great things and it was not an accident and I'm here at the, in the greatest part of the universe, the greatest country on the planet at its greatest time. It's a tremendous honor and you should be proud of that. Now what can take you away from that? What can take you away from your integrity and your spirituality? At your age, there are tremendous temptations. I have two children about your age. And I talk to them about this all the time. You can be tempted by drugs, alcohol. You can be tempted to cheat on a test to get ahead. If you're an athlete, you can be tempted by steroids. All these things may have already come to you, and if they haven't, they will soon. 
These are the things where if you make the wrong choices, you fall off that path. You stop having that integrity. You stop having that spirituality. You start to think, really, I'm just in it for me. And it's hard sometimes to resist temptation. People who have no integrity, they have more choices than you do. If you're competing with somebody who has no integrity, you have all the good choices. He has all the good choices and all the bad choices. He can pick and choose. So he has an advantage over you, or so it seems. But I want to tell you something. Here's what I've learned from seeing a lot of people around the world, from warlords and terrorists to criminals. The people who have no integrity really have no advantage because every time they do something bad, every time they cheat, look at Lance Armstrong, people know about it. People know about it. And they live in fear that somebody's going to expose them or show them up. And you do not want to live a life of fear. If you have integrity, you do not live a life of fear. And you always have an advantage over the people who have no integrity. I remember when I first was made ambassador, I had to go through this top secret security clearance process. And here I was, 46 years old, and the investigators asked me everything I had done wrong since the time I was in high school. And I had to sit there and tell them every single thing. So if you think the things you're doing now won't make any difference 20 years from now, in fact, the exact opposite is true. The mistakes you make now could prevent you from realizing your dreams 20 years from now. Now, the good news is, Nobody expects perfection. I made some mistakes. I had to tell them some things I didn't want to tell them that I'm not going to tell you. But you know what? They weren't too bad. And I got the clearance and I went forward. Only two, two months later, I got a call from a friend of mine. He was up for a big job in the Bush administration. Big job. And he said to me, Tom, I have another friend, and I had a feeling I knew who that other friend was, who is also up for a big job, and he's uh, messing around on his wife. Um, do you think he has to tell the investigator that? And I said, well, if he doesn't, he goes to jail. 18 U.S.C. 1001, the Supreme Court judges know that. You go to jail when you lie to a federal investigator. Of course he has to tell him. And I think he was talking about himself, but he said it was a friend. Uh, well, it turned out that person withdrew their name from a very big government job because they had made a mistake and they thought they could get away with it, and they cut short their career by not having integrity, by not making the right choices. So the things you do today... The things you do now are going to affect your future. You don't have to be perfect, but if you make a mistake, correct course and try to make the fewest possible mistakes of all. Now that's the inner qualities you need. And you might have heard people talk about these things this week, and they're so, so important for you to do these things. But there's other things I like to talk about when I talk to young people about their future, more practical things, because I will tell you something you're not gonna hear from everybody else. All the integrity and spirituality alone will not ensure your success. You have to have some practical skills as well. So have that base of integrity, have that base of spirituality, but you're going to have to have some plans, and you're going to have to figure out how you're going to get from here to there. And when I talked to these 40 very successful people, I asked them, okay, now I know what makes up your inside. How do you go about, though, being successful? How did you get to be a CEO, a president of a, of a company? How did you get to be a U.S. senator, uh, a seven-time Grammy-winning rock star? How did you do it, aside from your personal conviction to integrity and spirituality? Well, let me ask you all a question. How many times have you heard somebody, a judge on American Idol or a basketball player or something, say, you can be anything you want if you focus and work hard enough. How many of you heard people say that? Almost everybody. Do you think it's true? No, it is not true. You cannot be everything you want. I am five feet eight, and I can't jump, and I will never be in the NBA, ever. Never. And I could work 24 hours a day. I could practice as hard as I want. I could focus on that, and it's never going to happen. I play guitar, but I'm not that good. You know, I'm never going to be on stage with, a, with thousands of people there. The fact of the matter is... You've got to be more practical about your career. And what I learned from working with, talking with, being around some of the most successful people in the world is they always had two qualities. They found something that they were really good at after trying a lot of things, and they found something that they like. If you want to have long-term career success, find your best skills and find something you like. And it has to be both because there are people who are really good at things they don't like. I had the unfortunate experience of talking to a lawyer not too long ago who always wanted to be an author but never took the time to write a book. He was a really good lawyer but very unhappy with his life because he had something he was good at but he didn't like. Similarly, as I said with the basketball or the hockey or the guitar or whatever, you can really like something but if you're not really good at it, it's not going to work. So in addition to having the core qualities of integrity and honesty and spirituality, you're going to have to experiment a little bit. 
Try a few things. Make sure you're involved with your community. Look at what classes you like and start to think right now, what is it that I really like and what is it that I'm really good at? And that's the direction you should go forward in as you, go, as you move forward with your lives and your career, applying to college, going to college and having a career. But at the same time, everybody I spoke to, I was something like, I did a survey of percentage, like 90 something percent of the people I spoke to said you also need to be flexible though. Uh, even though you're setting out in a general direction to so say you're really good at public speaking and you love politics and you're going to set out toward a political career, if you say, okay, this is what my path is going to be and I'm not going to veer from it, that's not a good idea either. That same astronomer told me, keep in mind the universe started with a big bang. It's moving from a state of order to disorder. There's disorder all around you. If you really think you can hit the bullseye and sitting here today are sure you're going to be president of the United States someday or sure you're going to be CEO of Google or something like that, that's a pretty dangerous path unless you have some flexibility. Uh, I remember when I was a first year law student at Harvard Law School, I met a young man. Uh, he sat me down, he was very confident. He said, I'm going to tell you what my career is going to be, Tom. I'm going to graduate from this place, practice law for a couple of years. At age 30, I'm going to be the youngest senator from Kansas. At age 40, I'm making a run for the White House. And he said, I'm focused on it, I'm going to do it, and you watch, and it's going to happen. You know where he is right now? Prison, you're absolutely right. <laughs> he got caught running drugs and guns from South America. And you know what happened? When things didn't turn out, when that plan he had plotted out year by year, by day by day, by hour by hour, by minute by minute, didn't turn out right, he fell off the rails so quick he just descended into a life of chaos. It's because he had no flexibility in his plans. Almost everybody I talked to started out in a general direction, but they weren't so focused here, they looked a little over here and over there. Ronald Reagan, one, in my mind, the greatest president ever. He started out as a sportscaster, a radio sportscaster, because he was really good at talking and he loved sports. He found something he was good at, something he liked, and he went that direction. And then he took a trip out to Hollywood to, to do a sports cast, and an agent saw him and said, you know, you might do better in acting. And they got him a screen test, and then he was a movie star. That's still a long way from being president of the United States. And he saw some problems with the way the movie industry was run, so he ran and became president of a labor union. And from a labor union, he became a governor, and from a governor, he became president. That was not a linear focused path. That was finding what you like and what you're good at and looking for opportunities. I had the honor of working for Condoleezza Rice. You know what she started out as? A concert pianist. That's what she was, and she's still a great piano player, but she ended up being Secretary of State. And even in my own much smaller career, I admit, I started out as a lawyer, and then I was asked to be a prosecutor by Senator Danforth, and then Senator Danforth liked the work I did and said, why don't you be my chief of staff at the United Nations? And then I'm at the United Nations, and the State Department says, why don't you come to Washington and run the law enforcement division of the State Department? And here, this Missouri boy, out of nowhere is in 30 countries in 18 months, leading diplomatic missions around the world, and then they made me ambassador. I came back here, uh, and I said, okay, I'm gonna teach now, I'm done with all that, and some, some of members of my party said, we wanna run you for political office. That is not a linear path. That's finding some things you like, finding some things you're good at, setting out in a general direction, and keeping all options open for the best opportunity. There are many ways to get to a good, successful, fulfilling life and career. The last thing I want to tell, thank you. The last thing I want to tell you is if you want to be successful, you need to develop what I would call professional charisma. You don't have to look like a movie star, but you have to know the facts cold, you have to work harder than everybody else, and you have to make other people feel good about themselves. If you're always the best informed person in the room, if you're the first in and the last out to work, people start to admire you. If you show respect for the contributions other make, others make, uh, and, you men and you recognize that ambition is good, opportunism is bad, always work for the better of the organization, you'll find people will want to promote you and move you up higher. So it's very important to drive yourself in a way that's consistent with good practices, uh, ambition, uh, working hard, and develop what I call professional charisma, where people want to be around you, where you don't have to force yourself on them. They want to meet with you. They want to spend time with you. They want to be part of your lives. And you'll find that people who are a generation older than you are going to want to give you opportunities. They're going to want to promote you. They're going to want to give you that summer internship, and then that permanent job, and then that promotion, or introduce you to that senator that may hire you, put them on their staff, which then gets your political career started. Those are the things you have to do, and it's very, very important. And also, uh, it's not 
bad to have some fear in your life either. You know, people say, oh, no fear. I see all these no fear things going on. The fact of the matter is when I was in Afghanistan, I talked to some of the Marines there and said, are you scared? I mean, we got Taliban all around us here. I don't feel so great about it, you know. And, and he said, absolutely, sir. We are scared to death all the time. And I always thought that was interesting that a tough Marine would say that. He said, but you can't let the fear paralyze you. You have to let the fear sharpen you. He said, when I'm scared, I see further, I see clearer, everything comes out in slow motion, I know where to shoot those guys and I'm always gonna get the bad guys. So it's okay to have fear, it's okay not to be sure of yourself all the time, but when you have doubts, don't let it destroy you, make sure it sharpens you, turns you into a better person and a more successful person. I think if people see you, thanks. if people see you channeling your talents, channeling your ambitions for the greater good of the organization, whether it's a church, a charity, boys, state, your school, whatever. Do the things I said. Have integrity, spirituality, be realistic about your career plans, keep your options open, don't worry about fear, be ambitious but not opportunistic. If you combine all those factors together, these are the qualities that make a great CEO, a senator, a president, a diplomat, all the things that I know people of your caliber and quality uh, want in life. People will admire you, They'll want to be around you, and your future will take off at lightning speed. It's an honor to be with you here today. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Thank you. I think it's time to swear in your new statewide elected officials. I think we'll talk to everybody except the governor first. You'll come up here. Uh, please stand and uh, put your right hand up and repeat after me. And I will, I will leave a blank for the offices. Just say your office uh, individually. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the state of the Constitution of the State of Missouri and the Constitution of Boys State, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of according to my best ability. Congratulations. I announce the following representatives and senators to escort the governor-elect of Missouri Boys State to the dais. Representative Mahmoud, Representative Kwok, Representative Wright, Representative Bippin, Representative Howe, Senator Hernandez, Senator Perez, Senator Lee, Senator Mansell, and Senator Smith. For what purpose do the doorkeepers rise? Mr. President, the governor-elect of the 2013 session of Missouri Boy State approaches the chamber. Mr. Doorkeeper, open the door and allow the governor-elect of Missouri Boy State, the Honorable Wisdom Swanu Nwike, to enter the chamber. <laughs>
Thank you. You may all be seated. Mr. Speaker, Mr. President Pro Tempore, Senators, Congressmen, and esteemed guests. Tonight is a night of celebration. We have created a fully functioning state government in just a few days. But before we can celebrate, we must give thanks. We must give thanks to the American Legion 